call this meeting of CPDC to order. Um, so the first item um, of discussion is one that um, I'm not all that pleased to be talking about, but you'll notice that we have an empty seat here uh, tonight. Unfortunately, um, longtime CPDC member and um, town meeting member uh, Dave Tuttle uh, passed away uh, this summer. Um, he will be missed on this board as um, uh, uh, the folks that have been um, on the board with him and, and involved with him um, uh, on this board and uh, at town meeting um, will know that he was very thoughtful, um, spent a lot of his own time uh, volunteering for the town of Reading um, and uh, he will be missed. Um, we can just take uh, just a minute um, and and actually I think that he would um, um, I, he uh, as I mentioned he spent a lot of hours um, volunteering for Reading and, and um, uh, um, appreciated that it, the, all the the um, uh, spirit that this board and people that involved um, uh, brought to the town. Um, um, so not only would I like to thank David for a few minutes, for a minute of silence, um, uh, but really all the people that he, I'm sure, would like to, to thank as well um, as we come together as a, as a town. Okay, um, as things must continue, um, we will um, start what's on the agenda. Um, so our first item here is um, the, the continued public hearing um, for a major modification at 107 Main Street uh, Fusilli's Restaurant. We have, uh, no, I think we did. Mm -hmm. So there is a slightly revised plan that was submitted to us um, late last week, I think. Um, that we, did we send it in? No, okay. Um, we didn't want to send you today at the last minute, but we, we have it up on the screen. It's really just a change, I think, to the handicap um, configuration based on comments that we've received from engineering. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you want to open the hearing or? It, it, it says here on the agenda that it's so a, that it's it. a um, continued yeah. public hearing. So you've said, already opened it. Continue yeah. with yeah. the testimony. This yeah. is my first time testifying. All right. right, that's correct. <laughs> my name is Jeffrey Bremel with Myers to Brem Corporation. Right corner of the plan is my address. We're in Western Massachusetts. With me tonight is Michael Palmer from Keith Hilly's Restaurant. It's at 107 Main Street. Uh, it's on the plan here. North is up. Uh, this is Main Street. The existing building used to be the Wayside Bazaar. If you remember that. Um, it's a 31,940 square foot lot. Uh, everything in light gray is existing, and the dark stuff over here is what is proposed. So essentially what is existing is a restaurant with associated access and parking. There's, there were 49 spaces. The drainage system uh, included uh, some 
catch basins and stormwater features that drains out to a Tofton Street. The roof uh, goes into an infiltration system. This was all approved by the board uh, about a decade ago. Maybe a little bit less. And it, it was built according to that plan. There are two handicapped parking spaces and a crosswalk, both being uh, available. There is a zone line that goes through the property here, in this business, in this residential S5. We started out uh, in the history of this is that uh, the restaurant is doing well and there's been parking uh, at various locations off property and Mr. Palmer wants to bring those locations on property. There's a long history, which I won't get into, on Hopkins Street uh, parking, but we want to bring those spaces onto the site. Uh, so we started with, with nine spaces uh, originally proposed, not with you, but with Conservation Commission. There is a wetland back here, and in the eight years or so since we were with Conservation, uh, some of the wetland rules changed and allowed um, this new wetland line to be here as opposed to wherever it was before. That's the wetland line. We have a 20 foot, 25 foot zone of natural vegetation that we have to leave undisturbed. And then the 35 feet, no structure, obviously. We're not putting a structure here. Uh, so we had it reflagged by Leah Basbanes, uh, reviewed by the Conservation Commission. And then we went through the whole process with them from May, June, it's continued a couple times for various reasons, quorum issues, um, other issues, and we finally got the order of conditions which was issued last month um, for this work as shown. In that process, we, we, were, we changed some of the configuration of this and lost, uh, two, lost but there's two spaces less than what we originally had planned here. And primarily that was to add some buffer to the neighbor to the north, who's here tonight. So we added some areas to plant some trees. Uh, we have a row of arborvitae type trees here. It's a screen, and a low level screen, and then a high level screen with some uh, red maple trees. Here we show us no storage areas, and all that has been approved. To give you orientation, if you've been to the site, this is the current location of the enclosed uh, dumpster. So this is right now uh, partially or mostly wooded. There were some trees as part of a replication plan with the Conservation Commission, which was a subject of a lot of discussion, nothing to do with you, but just so you know some history. There were some replicated trees that were supposed to be planted here. They were planted and destroyed during the snow. Uh, issues late leading to that, there was one or two left. Uh, so those trees that were part of an original replication plan, a mitigation plan, were added to these trees. And so there's a whole bunch of notes on the mitigation program. Essentially the bottom line is we're proposing two additional trees more than is required by the Conservation Commission. And like I said, they approved all this work as part of their order of conditions. Your engineering department asked us to deal with the drainage on site. We had intended to basically V shaped this parking, so an inverted V, sending it down this line into this existing catch space in here. Now they wanted us to not do that, but instead your engineering department to treat the, the runoff from this area separately and not discharge it into the drainage system. So we're adding a new catch basin and new infiltration system underneath the parking lot. That's been reviewed by your town engineer, and I believe he has no problem with that. The proposal then is seven parking spaces, uh, six perpendicular and one parallel spot. Like I said, the snow storage areas are here. There's a, a ring of uh, erosion control to protect the wetlands. Uh, the neighbors to the south came to some of the Conservation Commission meetings concerned that we were going to work in there or near their land. They have some open space here, uh, but we are not obviously going near the wetlands. And uh, like I said, the neighbor to the north is here as well. The last issue we dealt with, which Julie just mentioned, was the handicap parking. There are two spaces and a crosswalk uh, being accessible. That's part of the original approval. Uh, when you had, we were, there were 49 spaces before. When you break into the 50th space, you need another handicap spot. So we went back and forth again where that would be and how that would be. 
and the ultimate uh, solution was to basically restrike these 10 spaces, push this out a little bit. I think we needed three more feet. That provided an eight foot uh, handicap spot and a five foot aisle as required. And the, the, tr the clear pathway or throughway is in the parking area, which is allowed under the federal regulations. So that's our proposed solution that came, like Julie said last week. Otherwise, we believe everybody is reviewed this. We had department meetings. We had various meetings. And then lastly, I might as well mention it, and I'll ask um, possibly your staff to comment further on it. Uh, this will require a variance for work in the residential S5 zone. And so your, your proposed conditions includes language to uh, relate to that or reference that as well. That would be from the Board of Appeals. So we're familiar with that. We also are informed that the Board of Appeals would prefer, if not require, that all the other approvals be granted prior to them seeing it. So we're en route to that. Uh, we have conservation. Hopefully we'll get this approval and then head off to the Board of Appeals. That's my proposal and that's my uh, presentation. I'm not sure exactly if they'd prefer it or require it, um, but they have recently given feedback on another project that they would have liked CBDC's input first. So, but they're not the same. It's not an apples to apples situation. So. Okay. And Michael and I are here for questions. All right. <clears throat> um, questions. I guess one of the questions, you know, so we look straight here to parking requirements, one space for every four persons of the capacity of the facility. So what is the, the capacity? The capacity? Um, I believe it's 134. But uh, capacit uh, capacity was limited because of the parking. Because in the, uh, the rules beyond the one for four, there's all, you also take into account one per employee during busiest shift. So that was the calculation that kind of held down the seat count. The square footage allows for probably dramatically more. We're not looking to increase seat count. We're just looking to increase parking. Um, so one of the other questions that I have in terms of employee parking um, in general, because I was just looking at the satellite view, is that your neighbors to the north are more of a nine to five mm -hmm. business and and you guys are an evening establishment. So have you ever explored arrangements to particularly put employee parking? Me to the south. The south. That's what I meant, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Some look in the north. <laughs> north yeah. Um, yeah, so there was a lot of talk about that going through uh, all the permitting originally. Um, we could we could discuss it as a new right now if you'd like if you have suggestions that uh, you'd like to see met um, what we what we've done over the 10 11 years we've been there is um, Meineke has always been very cooperative with us um, on a voluntary basis uh, no, no contracts or nothing like that but they've turned over two and three times so that's always a kind of a, a delicate balance uh, and then beyond that I guess to the south is uh, 95 main it's like a four unit. It's where uh, we're uh, going closer to the highway in between me and the gas station. Um, there is parking there. We've never, I don't think anybody's ever used it because there is a grade change down here by the dumpster. It's probably, you know, yeah. probably one to five, four feet. Uh, so no one's ever really gone there. We've discussed uh, valeting, but because 95, because of uh, the, the main road with the two lanes, it was really kind of difficult to even consider. Um, so, as far as employee parking goes, um, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't remember what we agreed on. Um, I don't believe um, there's been a lot of issues with it, but again, uh, something that kind of sticks in my mind, I think at one point we discussed parking employees over this side, because it was furthest from residential, because this is 95. And then there's the uh, condos that are up here, but they're at a much higher grade and buffered quite a bit with vegetation. So the only real obstacle for noise for the residential is uh, Dababney's house. All right. But so 
I thought, sorry, I thought the opening was that that new section would be the employee parking to relieve the load for the other piece. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Is, so having the employee parking option, if you could do an arrangement with the office park. Oh, the office complex here. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, again, we, we've, we've kicked that around and we've solicited conversation from the, from Meineke, from um, the gas station, from 95, is owned by a, a gentleman named Dr. O'Brien, and no, you know, from their standpoint, then why would they commit? You know, why would they contract? You know, how can? Understood. Understood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's an overall town question. Yeah. It's something that the select board needs to be mm -hmm. thoughtful mm -hmm. about. We've had it with another site that has a similar type of um, sure. pressure point. Yep. I just wanted to know if that conversation, because of the fact that you guys are neighbors, yes. and you have very different time points in time when the when the yeah. when the population is going to be right. Like, you know, yeah, again, we've had we've had a lot of conversation. We've talked I, I talked to Dr. O'Brien. I have him on my cell phone. I help him with snow. Um, and I think he'd be willing to off the record say, "Hey, people can use it." But then it gets to the point to how do you know, how do you advertise it? You know what I mean? Do you want to advertise it because now it becomes you know, he doesn't want he probably doesn't want the wear and tear on his property. That is that is yeah. Okay. Could it um could it be used, you know, could you have an agreement with him for just like six employee spaces in his lot or? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think the problem is timing too. The employees aren't going to arrive after five, right? They, they generally. Our, is our, his our, lot our evening staff starts at four. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess we did more recently at, you know, at least one meeting that I attended mention this yep, right. as an alternative to mm -hmm. you know putting parking in this currently wooded area yep. um and i was under the impression that that conversations had I, I didn't realize that you'd had recent conversations about it we've had conversations about it uh, how okay. recent they have been i mean basically it's uh, you, you just can't keep kicking the same door hoping for a different answer mm -hmm. you know without being ignorant or rude to the you know so he and I have a great relationship, like I said. Um, he, nor Meineke, um, were willing to put anything in verb, you know, anything out there as a commitment because they want to protect their own interests, you know. Um, especially O'Brien took that building over 95. I don't know when he took it, maybe four or five years ago. And uh, I don't know if any of his businesses extend beyond five because uh, I think he has four units in there. So. And then even seasonally with the snow, if my people are in there and he's got a snow maintenance person, you know, so again, he just, he nor Meineke wanted to, they were very willing to let us use it uh, informally, but that was it. That was as far as it was ever going to go. Um, and if, just one other thought, not to beat a dead horse, but if the town were to step in as the broker between the two of you? Yeah, he'd tell you no. I know O'Brien would. I don't know who the new owner of Meineke is. Um, but, but I've actually had that. He's actually called me and told me. Um, I think it was in in response to a conversation we had had. Mm -hmm. He said he called me and told me so that I wouldn't feel slighted or that he was being rude to me. He just gave me a heads up. He said, listen, it, just so you know, if anybody ever asked me, I won't. And, you know what I mean? And I can't. But you're welcome to do it. I mean, you don't have to trust my words. But, uh, yeah, he... That's what I was referring to earlier, Julie, when you would ask me. Is that okay. basically that conversation? Mm -hmm. And then, so I think that the second question. So, just as a full disclosure, I live on Bear Hill Road, mm -hmm. so um, I have to turn into the parked cars on a regular basis, and. Um, I don't like it. Where's Bear Hill? I'm, I'm so go down Hopkins, okay. and when it turns to go towards Wakefield, I'm on the left there. So when you come down Hopkins, you go around the turn. You can either keep going straight down the hill, or you can go right to come back out to Main Street. Is that? No. So Hopkins is right here. Yep. So if you were to follow it that way, yep. It takes a turn towards Wakefield. Yep. My street is, it goes straight, there's cedar okay. for a tiny little bit, and then it's Bear Hill, so it's right there. So to, to reach to my house on a regular basis, I'm turning into those parked cars. Right. And I've wondered, as a resident, but also as a member of this board, whether that's allowed. So the original CPDC, I think, right, um, conversation on all that, they, originally we were allowed to have parking on both sides of Hopkins. 
and then uh, a few months or a year into it they called us back in and they restricted parking on the opposite side of the street and that was the um, concession or solution at the time so this is not meant to alleviate that spillover this is basically just well, I think, well right, right so indirectly it, it may help right but um, and it may not realistically right. right but it's extra parking and that's that's the overall goal so I mean do, do my staff do they park on Hopkins yeah if the, if the parking lot's full you know what I mean when they right. pull in so but you know if you take all my people and put it in the new area hypothetically right. would a customer just absorb that spot you know rather than go to Meineke you know that's the whole point of this is to get yeah I'm trying market. to understand that this demand and supply yeah. pressures yeah. is what I'm trying to understand here so well. within our property I have two private dining rooms we will we cannot accept reservations in the private dining rooms almost any evening of the week because the parking is dwarfed and so what happens is because we're off 128 also we have a lot of commuters so like if someone plans a party of say 10 to 20 people um, if you were in downtown Wakefield say uh, no whatever so if you're in Reading and you have 10 to 20 people what's happening is they're using it as a kind of a come together oh, so to they're it. coming from the north from the south right so they're taking 20 cars so we as as a point to that we refuse the parties which is much needed business because the parking's dwarfed because what happens is if you put those 20, 25 cars in there, um, can't take everybody else off. drives by and say, oh, they're really busy and they just keep going. And that's been told to us time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? So um, that's why, I mean, added park. I mean, that's why, you know, we went from nine. So I'm, we're, we're, I'm putting, we're putting a lot of effort into this small area mm -hmm. just because uh, seven spaces against 49 spaces is a what 15 percent increase I don't even know right How, however you want to look at it but seven to 49 is pretty dramatic to us I mean that would be it would help a, uh, help a great deal now correct me if I'm wrong <laughs> there was discussion when the uh, town went and made parking only on one side of Hawkins Street yes you were requested to force your employees said you could not force them to do that is that correct well, there was originally we had both sides of the street when you say we had originally the parking rules allowed parking on both sides right of the street. so what was so what was originally approved for our business was both sides of the street no that was not approved for the business that's how it existed at the time well it was a, it, it wasn't restricted it wasn't restricted correct okay. But right. nobody on any board said, oh, no, your employees can park on both sides of the street. It was what was allowed at the time. So, so in fairness, there was no conversation about my employees on the street at all. The, 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 the two-sided parking mm -hmm. became a secondary discussion after we had been open for a little bit of time. That is correct. And it was realized that it was an issue, so they restricted it to one side. Yes, but no, it was not in regards to my employees. I don't. That was that was just overall. It was overall. The, there was a request to see if you could get your employees to park in your parking lot, where your customers who are only there for an hour or two. Well, so that's what that's what confuses me because I remember a specifically a conversation about my employees parking on the dumpster side mm -hmm. because it was furthest from the residential. Yeah. So, um, I don't. I don't. You know. I, I. I'm trying to think of the logic. I'm trying to think of the conversation about employees parking on the street. I don't recall it. Um, we will get to public okay. comment shortly. Right. So, if you were to get these extra spaces, mm -hmm. would you force some of your employees at least to use them? Yes. Yeah. These are for employees. Is it, yeah. These are That's for employees. Good. So you're not looking to expand. The seating in them. I know, no, have no intention of expanding seating. Okay. Issue no. then. No. Okay. Logistically speaking, those spaces are probably best for employees because they might be a little challenging to get in and out of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it yeah. Seems right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the it's called a swale on the plants that. What looks like a grate for the yes. Yep. So I assume that's actually a grate, not a, a swale. 
Well, it's an asphalt swale, so you either have berms or swales. Okay. So this is a berm, this is a swale. So let's just take clue the, I've had this problem before with contractors when they start doing the opposite of what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So calling it a swale makes it very clear. It's basically an inverted line that takes it to a new catch basin. Okay, and there's nothing that would stop a car from traveling from no, one side just, to the other. Just, you notice, you don't even notice it, but you have crown in the roadway. Mm -hmm. It's 2% each way, and this is just the opposite of that. You won't even notice it. All right, and the dumpster currently, that is the current position of the dumpster? Right here. And I'm just wondering how, if there's a car parked there, the dump truck would get to it. The doors seem to open into That's the That's how it space. is now. He comes during the daytime. What time do they come early? Yeah, so they're, um, by town bylaws, I don't think they're allowed to come before 7. Right. Our, on our route, he gets there around 10. And uh, we open, and, and he's familiar with us, of course, right? So um, and we open 11:30. So um, there's no no one's parked there at the time. All right, but if there's a car parked at night, how would you get the trash to it if there's a car blocking it? There's no overnight parking. No, you're talking, talking while you're open. Oh, oh well, no, there's plenty. There's enough room. It's a uh, it um if the if the parking space is 18 feet long, I think I think there's I think there's two or three feet um, from. The, the outside edge of the car. So mm -hmm. There's enough room to open the doors to get to okay. And if we ever had to, which we, we don't have to, we could always leave it indoors, but you would never do that. Yeah. But I didn't know if you wanted to rotate the dumpster. So it faces no, that's a, oh, it's a pretty major structure. Yeah, it's now. a massive it's concrete, structure. It's a concrete. well. It's a, it's a big okay. deal. Yeah. We're very well protected structure. We thought about moving. That's the first thing I did is I went out there and said, well, let's see if we move this. And I said, no, nah, that's okay. <laughs> Now the um, erosion fencing, is that permanent fencing, temporary fencing? Is no, that it's designed just temporary to during during construction? Okay. So if there's any erosion, it gets stopped at the fence before it goes in the well. And the parallel space that referred into your um, letters that you removed yeah, it was right here. Was there? Okay. Those answers my questions for now. The only question that I would have is whether or not this is going to be sufficient for parking or if you're still going to have the overflow of 10 cars, because typically I think that's what it is, is 10 cars that park on Hop Hopkins. Is that what I, that's what I've noticed. I think you're, you're always going to have overflow. It's making it better, you know. It's not every single night. I mean, so you, maybe you think of it this way though, right? Friday and Saturday will always probably be an issue, but it may alleviate Sunday through Thursday, right? That's the, I think that's how you could, could potentially look at it. Because right now, say, you know, all our nights are pretty consistent, but um, if you take 10 away from the weekday nights, um, you may have clear streets. So then Saturday seems like the most logical day to have the arrangement with the place next door. Yeah, I, I, I'm... I'm trying to answer that as politely as yeah. I can. Then, then, I hear yeah. you. I hear you. I'm just yeah. looking, and I think that again, don't you know? It's we, something yeah. to talk to the select board about. True. It's something the town needs to be thoughtful about. It's mm -hmm. something that needs to be part of all these conversations, and you may need to be a test case for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's. But I think, uh, in fairness, I think um, I think we have been, and I think uh, mm -hmm. the. I mean, you have two properties that okay. you have options on. So you have new ownership at Meineke. That's going to be Sullivan Tire. I think that's going to be very difficult to get an answer out of them now just because they're so corporate and so yeah. much bigger yeah. where the other guys were real local. And then O'Brien, you, you're welcome to ask them. But um, I, I've already had the conversation a few times with them over the years. Well, the only difference is, Mike, and just speaking out loud, if the town, when we met with the department heads, there's a possibility that if the town were to be the licensee, mm -hmm. and with that comes all the town's insurance and liability, so it's not just right. you're not throwing that on on the on the on the owner. Right. That may have an impact. So I think what they're saying is, would you participate in the discussions? I think I'll, he's I'll saying you would. I'll have coffee. We'll, we can talk about it, you know whatever <laughs> you want. But um, I'm just saying, like, so if the roles were flipped and someone came and asked me, I would politely say no, just because. Right. Why? You know, well, so unless you wanted to be, unless your outcome was to be real cooperative, I guess. But well, so, so right, this is a this is a problem. Is that um, in, in shared parking in in Reading, right? 
because property is scarce and basically what they'd be asking their neighbor to do is right we we need it deeded. It needs to be part of their real estate that they're giving up. It's fine to do, you know, um, uh, something less structured, but really they need something. They need, a, they need deeded rights or or some or licensed, you know, rights. licensed rights to it. Um, and that that other property would be giving up their development potential on their property, or you know that that you know part of their their real estate so uh, there could be terms on it though like there could be you know sure, like but renewed it, every year it, or something yeah, yeah but if it's maybe there'd be even a price yeah. if it's renewed every year yeah. it's, it it you know unless it's a 20 year lease or something then it, it uh, you know it, the, those, yeah those are, are the kinds of things that at least from a i'm going to say from a site plan pr proposal uh, review kind of a situation we don't want something that's an annual right thing because they do it the first year and then it falls apart and and the, the, the site you plan know, doesn't work anymore the site plan doesn't work anymore right. so um, I, I I completely understand why they why they don't want to participate in anything that's just ad hoc which is you know mm -hmm. um, you know maybe even happening now um, I guess a, a couple of things. Um, one is that uh, with the mindset of um, we don't want to build, um, uh, pave more land than, um, than would be necessary in order to get uh, beneficial parking out of here, I question of whether you actually can beneficially use there's two spots here, which I, which I question. Um, the, yeah, uh, the the one that's parallel, um, and then uh, the the last spot at the end. Yeah, I have, a, I have a hard time seeing a car um, uh, getting into those. All of those would require more than one movement, no question about it. But it's there, so the movement in is pretty easy. Typical in, it's the movement out that may require a couple of point turns. Same thing with this. Uh, There's much smaller cars now, so a lot of these spots were designed for 24 foot cars or 20 foot long cars. They have lots of cars that are much, much smaller. Some as little as 12 feet, you know, so it's a real small one. So, yeah, and if I can add a point, um, we talked about uh, employees parking in there and maybe it becomes part of the mm -hmm. plan. and. What can also happen there as part of the plan is a lot of the employees are in there open to close. So within our own group, the opening cooks or cleaners who will stay longer could would take the initial spots and work accordingly. And it's true that some people have, you know, let's say this spot, you could just back right up and, and out. But you gotta be a person that can back up. Some people don't like to back up. So being a public spot, not a great spot, but a private employee only spot, I think they can make it work. Again, we're trying to maximize. Yeah, understood. The, the solution is to take those spots out, and now we only have five spaces, so um. you go to Boston sometimes, see what they do, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or perfect us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I guess uh, two things. One on the variance, the need for the variance. Um, I uh, the, the var uh, getting a variance is a is a um, the thresholds for a variance are different than what we look at, and um, and uh, um, I, I don't want to second guess the ZBA on how they're. They would look at the the conditions here, um, and uh, but I also don't want to um, approve a site plan that's conditioned to a variance um, uh, because it, it essentially makes the site plan um, uh, null and void. And if they have some issues that they need addressed in the in the site plan, then then we. We can't do that. What what I I guess I would be okay with is pr providing the 
input to the the um, the ZBA, understanding that we we have worked through the issues, but not necessarily close um, uh, the hearing and and um, um, and approve the site plan, so that they get they get our understanding of what that it can work or that it, it can't work but without um, without um, necessarily second guessing what they're going to do uh, that would be that would be my preference um, so uh, but I'm going to say going back in time right when this was all um, was all built right we we knew that there were going to be parking issues on this site it's it's all over the the old um, uh, site plan review approval um, and uh, not all that surprising um, <laughs> that you are having um, uh, trouble and and this is to me a good solution um, or <laughs> probably the best solution that that you can that you can work out that that does seem to address some of the safety current concerns that I think um, you know uh, Rachel expressed and I know others have mentioned um, in the past about you know employees uh, or, or people whoever it is parking out you know especially close to the intersection there on Hopkins um, and so as I think about this I, I you know I wonder there's really two things on you know why was why wasn't it done in the first place? Why didn't Why didn't you do this? And and one of the answers, right, is because the the um, wetland rules that changed, is the um, and um, uh, um, and so because of those those rule changes, um, uh, that that you're that you're able to do this. Um, the but the other thing that we talked a lot about. Um, I, I recall was the the impact of the change of uh, use of your um, of your property on the abutting property, um, and the the discussion at the time was all along the side that you know that that the shared the, line. the shared line. Okay. Uh, no, oh, that okay. wasn't discussed. Yeah, that that was, yes, right. that was discussed because right. that was where the act activity was and this part of the the property wasn't going to be active because mm -hmm. it was in the wetland buffer so um, but now if you were to develop this um, now we really need to think um, uh, um, a little bit more about that buffer um, between this parking use on this this piece of the property and the back of of that house um, I guess, t to me, sure, you propose some ar arborvitae um, along there. Mm. Not my they favorite tree. Pro provide, <laughs> yeah, they pro they provide um, they provide some softening of that. I guess I, I would suggest that I know that your neighbor has um, a, a stockade fence, but it's. Because of the change in elevation, mm -hmm. it's even though it's probably six feet, um, it's still low. Yes. Um, I would suggest that you install a fence along the top of the elevator, the top of the slope. Yeah, um, because the change in use from um, install a new or replace. Well, that the other one's hers. It's right. The other one's hers on her property, right? right? So you that's you have nothing to do with that. Right. Um, um, uh, so install a new along that line. Along that line, mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, up up at the top of the slope, up at the top of the the slope, uh, because the to me the the two things that the two impacts um, that would come to to that property from extending this this. Parking is um, the n noise, um, some noise of um, idling, idling car for the time that it's parking there. Probably, probably not all that much. Right. Um, uh, and um, and headlights. Can I make a, a request, a suggestion? Yep. And, uh, so what we would what we would need to do because the um, uh, the little flower bed that's on my side of the property mm -hmm. on the fence line. Is minimal, 
So if you installed a fence there, it would be fence on fence. It aesthetically, it would probably be pretty hideous, especially from their side. So my uh, offer would be to replace their six-foot stockade fence with an eight-foot within the same on their line. Just because to have a fence and a fence, I think it's going to, they're going to be looking at, you know, boom, boom, it's going to. Uh, well, I guess I understand what you're saying. Um, the onus to buffer your use is, well, is, that's you want, is for you on your property. And okay. so, okay. and so he, the, the bigger issue is that, um, that it's not on your neighbors to, to maintain their fence to block out your use. Sure, that's fine. So I, I think that I think you know keeping um, keeping a fence on on your property mm -hmm. um, that you're required to maintain um, mitigates e your use. Of so I would your put changes. it out there that I would do just that, or I would offer to mm -hmm. replace theirs should they choose. If if you want to word it that way, just because. From their side, I think it would no, be. Yeah, no, I know having a, yeah. a fence with a fence and it yeah. just collects yeah, trash yeah. and stuff. Yeah, you get dead right. Um, yeah. But I do think that there's a lot of benefit to having it on your your property, especially since there is a, a um, elevation. Right, there's an elevation change there. Um, on that, Mr. Chair, there is a large silver maple mm -hmm. right on the property line. So obviously, we're not going to go right, right, that. Right. The fence would begin at the trunk of that tree. Just so you say, if you do say along the whole line in a condition, it needs to take, take out of the tree. You don't want somebody making a mistake cutting down the tree. <laughs> no, no. That's no. a huge tree. And are you also going to need to stop it at the 35 foot? Uh, yeah, probably have to stop it's, it. It's uh, further in. Structure it's here. right there, yeah. yeah. Unless you go back to conservation. Well, is that considered a structure? I think. You have to talk to Chuck. I think you go to 25 feet. Okay. Yeah, there is exemptions, by the way, in the Weather Protection Act for fencing. Right. So I think that's okay. The, uh, the other thing, too, is when you go to it, start going towards Hopkins, the fence, the existing fence, uh, uh, actually over here, stops and drops down to like a four foot. Um, and I think that's, again, for aesthetics, just to the corner. Mm -hmm. would, we, would we take it all the way to the corner, or would we... Uh, Stay to the the fence. Well, just talk, well yeah, yeah, I was just well, talking about the fence here. along yeah, that. That's the well, I thought you were talking about this. No, no, no. no. Oh, so this. Oh, yeah, yeah that's easy. <laughs> that's easy. That's easier. I'm sorry. I thought, yeah. Others before we open it up. I did want to ask about valet parking. Do you currently offer valet parking? And if so, where do people, where do those cars get parked? No, so we discussed it, and we, and I, I believe the the town had looked into it a little on their own end. Um, but the discussion we had uh, as part of my licensing and permitting, uh, basically just kind of highlighted all the difficulties in trying to propose it. So we talked about the Harrow's property. Yeah, right. Um, but every, everything came down to um, someone running across two lanes of highway back and forth. Right. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not yeah. good. Yeah. Well, Especially... They keep talking about the pedestrian light at that spot, yeah. though. You know how that get, uh, uh, Hopkins, how it continues yeah, over? It's awful. I mean, that's a zoo. Yeah. So, and that's kind of where you'd be running. Okay. So you do not offer valet parking not. today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Only because we don't really have a property to You don't have a, property a, to a lot. It's off-site. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the same side, it'd be perfect. Right. Yeah. I'm. I'm sorry. One more thing, and then um, I think you described it, but can you go over it again? Um, the ADA. Um, the what changes did you make um, related to the to the ADA path? So back in. As it exists right now, there are two spaces here. Both of them legally van accessible, and they both have signage and so forth, crosswalks, all that's fine. We wanted to put it another one right here, obviously, but by doing so, we would have lost the space. So the solution is just to restrike these 10. Mm -hmm. This 
quite a bit of room between the last space and the edge of the pavement there. And I, apparently this is just used for well, the snow plow, obviously, and then I guess laundry is done back here. Uh, so they need to get a laundry truck in and out. So there's plenty of room. There's still 14 or 15 feet left once I move all these over. And it's still just a striped space. Again, the laundry would be in the morning. Shouldn't have a spot there. But even if there was a car there, they still have 14 feet. And then adding an eight foot uh, handicap spot and a five foot uh, clear path. Then the question was between me and um, Ryan at engineering, is this, does this need to be crossed off like this? Crossed, cross hatched. Cross -hatched. And it doesn't. Federal law basically says that aisleways are considered uh, clear paths. So you crosswalk here, obviously, to tell the crossing perpendicular, mm -hmm. but an aisleway and a street is considered a clear path, so it's okay. So we had that question last week. And then his comment about the 16 foot. Was he was he looking at this plan, this same plan? No. This was everything was shifted over that couple of feet. Okay. Okay. So just just one. Previously, I had an eight foot and eight foot mm -hmm. spot here. Gotcha. And we were trying to make another van yeah. spot, and, and that spot was 100 percent in. You know, that eight feet was in the clear path. That's not that's, allowed. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Other questions before we open it up? Comments from the public. Okay, so um, if you can uh, name and address. Oh, first. sure. Uh, Patricia Debabney, one thirteen Hopkins Street. So I bought uh, the first house on Hopkins Street. So I just wanted to first ask about what. Can you explain what the variance is or whatever has to go before? Before the ZBA is yeah. Zoning Board of Appeals. Sure, Julie, do you sure. want to come? Um, yeah. Um, so I'll just show you on the map. So basically, this lot is split zoned. The front portion of the lot is Business A, which runs onto Main Street, and then the back portion is S15. Um, we do have a provision that allows for a 30 foot zone boundary extension so they can push the Business A portion further back but it still wouldn't include this portion, which would still be S15. And parking is not allowed in the S15 district associated with a commercial use. So they need to get a use variance. Okay, so I wanted to um, first say that the um, order of conditions isn't really final because it's being appealed. I, as an abutter, have the right to appeal that, which I've done. Mm -hmm. So it is not final, um, pending being heard. Um, and I wanted to say that prior to this whole thing coming up, um, I came before, I came to town hall with several concerns about just ongoing problems with the property and um, the most, one of the most recent was Mr. Palmer taking down the trees um, in the wetland area and the buffer behind the property without a permit. And um, it seems to have just kind of merged into this new order of conditions and that actually never got resolved. So there was talk um, for quite a while um, in getting Mr. Palmer in difficult, having difficulties getting Mr. Palmer to come in before the board to correct the action that he took. That was number one. Then uh, when he came, in my opinion, there were several different reasons that he did that. It was also mitigation outstanding from a prior time that he did that. And so that's one issue, in my opinion, of not adhering to protocols that are put into place. Second, addressing the parking, employee parking, you are correct. It was discussed, and there were 
there was supposed to be signage put up long ago for eight employee parking spaces on site and that never happened and then the parking on both sides of Hopkins was not for a year it was very short-lived because it was an absolute circus out there it was so dangerous it really was and so you know that um, I just wanted to correct my recollection was that it was not anywhere near a year in the making and then the parking we were asked if we wanted to make initially our side of the street also no parking which initially we didn't want to do because we're like where do people that are visiting us park right so it was agreed that employees wouldn't park on the street and so that that would alleviate a potential which it's always been the first thing that the first spaces that are taken are in front of our house when the lot is completely empty that includes tonight I took pictures and I've taken pictures uh, in the past where there's street parking that you can't even see to back out of your driveway literally I mean we've almost had so many accidents there and yet the parking lot is empty so you know it m Mr. Palmer is always explaining the need for additional parking but in many many days and evenings he's the, the parking lot has plenty of empty spaces and yet there's always employee parking on the street so I don't know that I, I have to say that I don't believe that 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 to be true um, then the sign like there's just so many things that are not <coughs> in accordance with what they should be that it makes you hesitate to think that what is agreed, agreed upon in the future or approved in the future is going to be followed either and so if I had the opportunity my husband and I to revisit saying if this goes through um, would we be able to make Hopkins Street n no parking in front of I mean we have we are okay with that now just for safety reasons you know and we'll try to address when we have company making arrangements for that um, and then I wanted to say that I don't know about the um, the fence like we we had agreed at the last when the order of conditions went through that and it is if you do look at the um, RCV the RCTV tape it will show that it was agreed upon that the mitigation and the prior tree removals removal would be he would Mr. Palmer would have a deadline of 12 months which it wasn't put into the order of conditions which is part of the reason for the appeal um, but my point is that um, you know we are going forward with new stuff and old stuff is still like outstanding so I would ask that you wait until before you give a decision until the appeal is heard and until one so we know what we're dealing with there and then because like even right now in the back alley that is the back entrance initially there was supposed to be no parking of vehicles there I don't know if that's changed but there's always parking of vehicles there so there's that line of cars for employees and snow removal equipment etc that's there there's two parking spaces that are constant I don't know if they are legitimate parking spaces but even this evening next to the dumpster there's parking there so right 
tonight when I came here and took photo parking spaces and all up Hopkins Street and the lot had like literally I'm sorry um, you know like 20 spaces open so I don't know if it's um, so much a on occasion they could use the extra parking spaces but it isn't on an on an ongoing regular basis and and that's even noted in the meeting minutes by the conservation committee who went out there to take a look at the site and pointed that out as well so i mean i don't know if you living on hopkins street i mean on bear hill have seen that too but many times there's a lineup of cars out on that street and the parking lot's practically empty I guess my impression is always when there's they're out on the street that means that that's full so I don't know if I've ever done the double yeah. on it but to me you know if at the point in time that they're on the street I, um, you know I will say I do see it in daylight hours um, which was always surprising Mm -hmm. But I always connect the two as as, as a indication that it was full. So but those are, and that is on the record that those, that, that, that's employee parking for the most part on the street. That's not patrons of the restaurant. I have no way to tell. Yeah. I no way to but tell. I mean, it, it, it has been discussed previously. So, um... <laughs> You know, I just don't want to be surrounded by cars and fence on fence and whatever because there's, you know, some occasions where extra parking spaces might be utilized. And, and I mean, in fairness, too, if, if the seat capacity is not going to be increased, the parking that is there now is more than adequate. So, um, a couple of things, just so that we're we're sort of all on the same page. Um, so, the the items, right? Uh, different boards have different purviews. Um, yeah. And the items related to tree clearing that was in the buffer zone, or or that may have not been appropriate to do, um, that is not under our jurisdiction. And, and I, I don't say that because, uh, I say that because that's something that, that clearly the uh, Conservation Commission has looked at and addressed and I would defer their expert, to, to their expertise on that and don't really a, a want to or an, it wouldn't be appropriate, appropriate for us to wade into that. It would just get everything um, uh, more muddy. And, and um, and I'll say the, the other thing that really isn't part of our purview is um, the parking regulations on the street. So that is something that's done by the, you know, pretty much a, con well, the Board of Supervisors have, um, I'm sorry, the select board, board. Is select select board. <laughs> the select board, it's an old Virginia thing. Um, the uh, select board has um, has you know puts those rules in place and they work closely with the with the um, with the uh, police department. Um, well, can I interrupt you for sure. just a moment? Because at the last meeting, is it Mr. Brim? I yes, okay, it is. Mr. Brim. I asked, was the was the idea of the extra? I specifically asked you if the idea was to take off, to take away the parking of employees on Hopkins Street, and you said yes, that was the goal. This, so this, this is he, they employees. seem to be agreeable to that. So, I mean... Yeah, and so I guess why I was talking about that is that it, we can't say that, you know, we don't have any p power. You are asking about whether um, whether there could be, you know, restrictions of parking for everyone along Hopkins Street. No, uh, I'm saying in front of my house. Anywhere on Hopkins Street 
that's not something that that this board can do. We could okay. we could advise mm -hmm. um, and suggest through the P, the another board um, to the to the select board of what we recommend if that was to, to come up. Okay. But that's not a decision that this board um, this board can make. The things we can do are thing, better yep. signage. Yes, the signage, um, which was part of the last mm -hmm. decision, could be looked at. Signage about employee parking could be included in this um, you know other aspects of usage of the employee parking or the new spots um, that those have to be filled up first I don't know if you can't go that yeah. quite that yeah. far yeah. but other aspects of the usage on the site itself and the signage on the site itself Mm -hmm. We certainly can think through some certain pieces of that. I guess what the other thing, what I hear, and um, the the way that you described, you know, different parking spaces being used or parking spots being used. Um, uh, uh, if if I were a business owner, um, which I'm not in this context, um, uh, with employees that w um, had to park in different spaces, I would want them to park out on the street, park in. The, that the ad hoc spots that that customers wouldn't use park in the little alley back behind there and use all those spaces so that customers walking in the front door pull in see the 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 empty um, the empty lot and and are aware that there can be uh, a space there so so but I, not sir excuse me when when it was originally approved and that and part of the approval was that eight spots on in the lot in a particular space that were kind of like I, up against um, not right in front of the building. I mean, that's not yeah. being done. So that you know, I and, mean, and and uh, no, I I recognize that. And so, but w uh, really, what I was addressing, I can understand why why the why these different spots are being used when the park the parking lot isn't full. Um, well, I can so, understand it too. However, so, if they are deemed to be employee parking spots or if it's deemed to leave that back alley clear, it doesn't mean that after it's approved you can do whatever you want. I mean, there's yep. a reason yep. that yes. they're yes. that they're yes. put into yes. place. And so, and so, the decision from 2009 um, uh, d doesn't have anything in here about specifically calling out employee parking spots. I do recall that because I was on the board back then. I do recall that there was discussion about um, those spots along the along in front of the dumpster. Mm -hmm. um, about exactly. because those are again just like the discussion we had earlier tonight those are difficult spots to get in and, and labeled uh, summer and compact yeah and parking in front of the dumpster you don't want your patrons parking there you have more control and I I I'm not gonna say that I remember that conversation because that was 10 years ago but I, I under understanding the site I would be surprised if we didn't have that conversation yeah, based on did. all the other because we have that conversation about about every tight site in Reading where where restaurants or, or commercial businesses are trying to shoehorn parking in because that's what happens in Reading <laughs> and everyone designs parking spots just like that and they all commit to um, having those spots be used as employees and what's different about this is that typically we include that on the plan or in the in the in the decision and i don't see that in this decision so it I, is it, may have been it discussed. is in meeting minutes somewhere so I, and i don't i yeah. i i don't dispute that mm -hmm. um I, I i guess my take is that adding these parking spots would help uh, some of the situation, some of the situation here about, you know, the the safety concerns about having all of that the parking out on Hopkins Street. Some of the the issues that you that the butters have with parking um, out there. 
um, um, it, it's but, um, also sort of just that like you know the trees along in between the properties that like maybe four trees that were mm -hmm. there as a buffer not at the wetlands were taken down without a permit so they are gone now no one's holding anybody accountable no one's enforcing anything those are gone now a fence is going to go up a fence on a fence that's going to be really to me not pleasant to look at okay then the trees that were taken down without a permit in the wetlands haven't been replaced the vegetation that was out there hasn't been replaced so little by little there's nothing left, you know? I mean, I just think that should be taken into consideration. And I'm not saying it because I think that you, I uh, uh, appreciate and respect that that's not your calling, but also when parking spaces are supposed to be, have signage that say employee parking, when signs are supposed to be up that say right turn only, when many, you know, when laundry things aren't supposed to be where someone puts them, when parking is done at the dumpster but it's not supposed to, when, um, when snow removal equipment is parked where it shouldn't be, then you know, so at some point, someone has to be accountable before it's just said, sure, here's some new things that you can do. You know? I, I understand that. Um, so, I do think that there's some... Um, if, if we were to approve this, there would be some conditions related to um, designating this area as, as um, employee, employee, yeah. um, employee parking. Um, uh, and um, I guess I, I don't know if there's other... Um, Conditions in terms of um, uh, operational con um, conditions that we would um, uh, look for, um, but in terms of the in terms of the um, variance, I, I guess I would uh, you know look to you all as well on on how we want to, um, how we'd like to address that. Can you tell, again, sequencing, sure. I'm just, I'm not sure how to be thoughtful about this. Well, sequencing with things like this is always a little bit tricky. Um, it's, on one hand, it's difficult for the zoning board to issue a variance that's not tied to a plan, and it's, so it would be hard for them to see this first, knowing that the Conservation Commission is going to set the limit of work and that you guys might have issues with the extents of pavement or the how many spaces or things like that. But on the other hand, it is a little bit tricky having them come last and having two decisions from other boards might make them feel like they don't have a choice um, in approving it. And um, also, you know, the criteria they look at for thresholds is very different than the things that are discussed at the Conservation Commission and at the CPDC. So sequencing is always a little bit tricky. In this case, I will say it was something that staff overlooked and the applicant overlooked until last week that they actually needed a use variance. Um, in another application that's similar in some ways and different in other ways, we, we suggest that the applicant actually go to the zoning board first to see if they get the variance as because it will impact their whole development program. Um, and then that would be generally, I think, would be a preferred approach. Um, but in this case, I think what you could do is you could, as Jeff suggested, you could hold, or maybe it was John, hold the hearing open, provide some feedback to the zoning board, and, and see how they feel about the variance before you tie the site plan to the variance. 
I'm concerned about influencing because the, right they have they um, they look at a whole different set of set of issues um, and I don't want to necessarily say that uh, by approving a site plan that we're necessarily in, in endorsing the the concept um, and, unless we want to also do that. Right, I mean, I guess if you feel you really strongly that yep. this, uh, this is going to be a good solution for this property, you could stick your neck out and go I mean, there. I think it's the only solution that will help with the business owner's perspectives and alleviate some, some of the neighborhood concerns mm -hmm. is really thinking about that as an employee lot and just getting them out of the way. I do think signage has to be improved overall, the right hand turn, no exit, exit only on Hopkins, things that were part of the original plan that haven't truly been enforced in a strong enough way. And I think similarly, you know, understanding this is an employee lot so that those Sunday through Thursday points in time, the street is clear as much as possible. And so I think as a solution, I, I, I do, I, the sequencing that you're talking about and that you've proposed to me makes sense with some tacit understanding that um, as a pressure valve option this seems to work to keep a successful business successfully running. That's my perspective. So what is, what's the sequencing that you would... Can you explain that again? <laughs> Um, essentially, we could report out maybe through town staff to um, to um, the zoning, um, the ZBA, um, that if if we agree, um, that's an if. If we agree that the that the site plan is appropriate, um, so that they understand that from that perspective, mm -hmm. that we we're okay with the design. Um, not necessary, and so that leave it up to them on the appropriateness of the use. And a similar, so is there the other condition that I would like to consider is something similar to what was in the 2009 one about some review of the traffic impacts on the street. So, like, if there's not a real, like some aspect where this does go to the select board at a point in time where we can actually see did this work or not. And I don't know, it's too late. <laughs> Once it's done, I don't, I want to look back at the last decision in terms of thinking about that, but. Could I like just offer one thing? Because it's my understanding and maybe I'm wrong that it can't go forward right now anyway until the appeal is heard. So, uh, because they're they're separate, it's all it's separate decisions. We're separate okay. boards, so we could move this forward. Um, it with the um, it, but in terms of, yeah, of that's an approval, what I was that doesn't okay. necessarily mean that it would it, they'd be able to do it because of the 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 appeal on right. the conservation. So the uh, the the. All of the decisions, although they're all interrelated, they still yeah. are they still are separate. Mm -hmm. I was just meaning that if it was there were things uh, top um, issues that you wanted to consider or think about, it really isn't going forward mm -hmm. until the appeal. Until I understand it's gotcha. all separate. Yeah. 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 No. You're absolutely correct. Thank you. So, Julie, I think something this says if overflow from the restaurant results in parking congestion on Hopkins Street, Board Selectmen may consider approving parking restrictions on portions of Hopkins Street. Which is what they did. So, it's similar. Like, if, if overflow from restaurant re does not result in parking alleviation, 
know what I'm saying? So so we're, we're talking about this, alleviating it. And I'm not saying all days. I, I get it that Friday and Saturday night most likely will be more... Um, right. But, but just an overall yeah. or the reduction or in congestion mm -hmm. has approved. Then this, the board of the, the select board may consider approving parking insurance. I think the second one we've talked about and I don't think we can put the, the second one is about the applicant shall use good faith efforts to seek and enter into shared parking agreement with area commercial property owners for shared employee parking. I mean, I think the only solution that I can see is Harrow's as an employee parking lot. Mm -hmm. And that, because it is for lease. I mean, they, they do, and it's, so it's an expense. It, yeah. So it's it's not... Inexpensive. Would be would would not be uh, it's not something you're willing to pay to for business. is what you're saying yeah. yes so understood that this is a, the shared arrangement is not necessarily something that can happen in here right but uh, you know at some, point, too, back to, I'm sorry. at some point in time it may yeah. be a business necessity but, that you have to right, but then, well. but then even you'd have to look at it even I think police fire you everybody would have to look at it too because say we did uh, rent that and you had people crossing 28 once you're never to gonna go get the, to work you're not gonna get the police department to an, endorse that I, we've had That's a lot of discussions issue. about that intersection and um, and it's one of the I, just, I don't want to. I don't want to make stuff up, true. but I know it's one of the more uh, dangerous intersections yeah. in the the area. Yes. Meaning having kid, the most kid accidents. a dog in tow. It's very yeah. scary. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, understood. I just so I don't think we can put the other one in in writing. But Tony, thoughts? Uh, well, I'll start with one. Is there any striping for fire lanes in this building? I don't know what the rules are or whether the fire department has weighed in or not. They have weighed in that they have no issues with this plan. Okay. Just today, actually, we sent them the new, we sent the new plan around to staff. So, and that includes anything that may be parked in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have access on th good access on three sides of the building. Okay, and that's what they want. All right. Um, I mean, that's it. As for the, I wish the applicant had gone to the Zoning Board of Appeals first. Um, I could have sworn that over time they knew that that parking was not available because it wasn't zoned properly, which is why it was never developed in the first place. Um, I do agree that we can't finalize a plan until the Zoning Board of Appeal makes their decision. Uh, they're basically going to say whether or not they can use the use plan, whether the use ends up with a thousand parking lots, uh, parking spaces, or one, that's the zoning board decision. Though, though, that's not typically the, uh, I have seen, and this is the thing that I worry about is that, is that they actually, do, they have like a plan that they file with their, yes. with their decision that they sometimes hand sketch out, you know, oh, parking can be here. And I, right, I, 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 that's, that's, that's not, I agree, it should yes. be, yes, we agree that parking can be used in this space and that they don't, but for some reason they're compelled to have a plan mm -hmm. attached to, um, and, and um, They like to work with more information than less. Right, yeah. You know, have their decisions really substantiated. I, I know, it's, it's yeah. flip a coin, but the reality is, the Zoning Board of Appeal has the most stringent requirements. So you have to meet the four criteria. And if if you don't meet those, no reason to going forward. I would assume, just off the top of my head, the process would be from most str stringent to least. So any applicant applying would go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Conservation Commission, and then the Planning Board. Granted, they can try it concurrently, and they can come up with the plans and everybody can give a little, yeah, it kind of works, but we can't uh, can't officially approve it until they weigh in. Yeah, and that's even, typically what we recommend yeah. when yeah. we realize these things up front. So this was an oversight. So with this plan, I guess that uh, uh, um, in terms of a design, 
I, I just I'll just put it out there. I would um, um, agree to recommend no agree to <laughs> recommend it truly <laughs> um, that we um, uh, ag agree with the design um, without commenting on the use. Uh, I guess with I'd like to see two changes. One is um, the addition of a uh, fence along the um, whatever border um, that you north call that. Side. Um, we were calling it like the northeast border, yeah. kind of. And and actually, and this may be an issue, but uh, the removal of the two snow storage areas. I think you put them on there for the conservation commission. So I, I you know, um, th those aren't really usable. Right, I mean they're tiny, and one of them's up against where you you would landscape. Um, I think you have the requirement to right. You remove um, if it's um, any sizable snow. You remove the so snow. You have one that's been sizable. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, I I wouldn't want on a plan indicating that there's some sort of belief that those would accommodate the snow storage for the for the um, the whole site so I, I would add I would advocate taking those off do we need some sort of clause on the fence to work with the abutter determine whether a mm -hmm. fence on the abutter's property needs to be extended to eight feet or whether the fence on this property well be installed. well mind you so if if they get a variance, they're gonna they're gonna have to come back. At which point we'll make a decision. We'll have a decision on there mm -hmm. that that mm, I, I there's a couple of things that we talked about here. We may talk a, a little bit more about the requirements of the fence if they don't seem to come up with something that seems to work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would expect that in the condition there will be. Um, uh, it clearly stated about the um, capacity that this doesn't impact the capacity of the 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 restaurant um, and um, some of the you know the designation of this as as uh, employee parking and then some of the signage reiterating some of the signage items that uh, Rachel brought up. So those are all the things that we'll deal with if they come back to us. Yeah. And in the meantime. If you all agree, we'll pass on the um, feedback from you to the zoning board that you will report to them that the site plan and the design are appropriate and that you're not commenting on the use yeah. at this time. Okay, so is that something you want to take a vote on or just informally agree that we can give that feedback to the zoning board? Um, I Do you have anything to add, Pam? Well, I think... Uh, We've heard the concerns of the abutter relative to current usage and the concerns that until this plan is enacted, which could take six, eight months still, that they make all attempts to use available on-site parking for employees and, desig and designate it as such. So I'd like to see that condition in order to improve the conversations all the way through this process so that we don't wait till this happens mm -hmm. that we work to ameliorate that now do you, do you think that's sensible just the mechanics of that without a decision to just make. Yeah. I think we would make that suggestion yeah would it be fair to say we'd like to see some improvement from the applicant yeah yeah on how the parking is being handled mm -hmm. yeah let's Yes, thank you for summarizing that. But Without you, actually you forcing see, anybody to do anything. No, no, not forcing. I just think operating in good faith is always paving the way to getting a, a good plan enacted. Yeah. I would just ask for you to um, articulate what you would like, and then I can act on it. Okay. That available on-site parking for be designated for employees and used as such. When you say designated, are you looking for signage at this point? Or are you just asking? Absolutely. Uh, I guess, so that it encourages employees to I use I guess I'm space. not a big 
I'm not a big fan of, of signage when you don't need to because they're your employees. You can tell them where to park. Um, I would just say that th th there's a lot of signage on that property. Coming in yeah. from Hopkins is a do not enter. Leaving uh, it's towards not the, there. It is there. It's always it's been there. It's not there now. It is there now. Well, it but was just and the, and there's a do not I think that they can communicate. I, I guess I would advocate that they uh, communicate to their employees that um, that 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 they don't that park. park yeah, 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 that's that, easy that, enough. Where would you site. like them to park? On site. Yeah, I know. But is there a particular yeah. spot because that's been brought to question my my vague recollection or probably guess is that the discussion was along the was yeah was I'm along the southerly okay. the southerly the edge there mm -hmm. um, th those spots tend to be a little bit more difficult to get in and mm -hmm. out of anyways so um, that's fine. Prob probably better for them to park along mm -hmm. there We're all in agreement with the feedback for the zoning board. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Absolutely. All right. So then we will continue this. We'll keep this open and continue yep. it. Okay. We need to continue it for a few months, probably. Yeah. Um, I just got there. Right? Let's, Let's do, do it. Two two months. If we can three. do it two months, and then if you need more time, we can continue okay. it again. That's fine. So, the two you months. A suggestion on the continuance. Sure. Just. Uh, my limited experience should we continue it to january because with thanksgiving and, and christmas we always seem to lose we have to apply they have to publicize it we have to go to a hearing yeah. so yeah. i'm okay yeah. with three months yeah. it'll be winter um, anyway why don't we say december 9th we haven't set a date in january yet for the board so yeah. december 9th and, and, and so if you're not ready you can yeah, we're write, be doing an email yeah. and we'll just continue okay. it to the okay. Could I um, inquire about like the zoning board of appeals? Is that something that's posted on the yes. town website? Their schedule is posted. Okay. So, actually, Patricia, as a direct abutter, um, when they appear before the zoning board for the hearing, you'll get a notification. To, okay, great. Yeah. Okay. So, do we need um, a vote to continue? To ah, language move that. We continue the public hearing for the major modification to approve site plan review for 107 Main Street, Fusilli's Restaurant. To December 9th at 7.30. To December 9th at 7.30. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I just want to say on behalf of the community, we are sorry for your loss of your Thank you. Thank you. co-board member. Thank you very much. Uh, I have to continue two different ones, is that right? All right. Um, move to continue the public hearing. To no, we don't need to. Oh, we don't right. need to do these we, two? The we two should. that are contained. Oh, we should. Okay. Yes. All right. Move to continue the public hearing definitive subdivision plan for 135, 139, 149 R Howard Street from Infrastructure Holdings, LLC. To October seventh at. Uh, let's see what time we have scheduled for. Eight o'clock p.m. Eight o'clock. Second. All those in favor. Move to continue the public hearing site plan review for 258 262 Main Street, Reading CRE Ventures LLC, to October seventh at eight. 815 8 at the request of the applicant to October 7th at 815 second All right. so okay. given that this one is continues to continue because of the mm -hmm. stuff happening in November why do we push it one month why don't we push it to December when they're, we know they're just asking for a month at a time We've asked them to if they want to withdraw and come back, or 
they schedule it out a few months and they just say no and they're happy doing it this way. Okay. okay. So is there any advantage to it? They I think they points like just in case if you were to decide tonight you're not going forward with the zoning amendments, then they don't lose another month. I see. Okay. Yep. All right, uh, are we good to keep going? Yes. Yeah, Since it's so. uh, four thirty-two. <laughs> <laughs> In counting. <laughs> yeah. Twilight Zone. So. <laughs> so we had we put the discussion of the downtown smart growth district design guidelines back on the agenda. Um, I think the last time it was discussed was the time when I was leaving um, in March, my last meeting. And before your sabbatical. Yeah, before my sabbatical. <laughs> um, and so I, we didn't make any updates. I was looking at the feedback from that meeting, um, and it's a little bit fuzzy in my mind. Um, so I thought maybe we would just revisit kind of where we left off and make sure we're all on the same page. And I had thought that one of the residents of the downtown was going to be here. Um, to help provide some feedback, but it seems like she's not here yet. Before, I'm sorry. Before, before we um, we move on to that, can we? Um, we're all set with town meeting. Yes. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So I will just have to. We're waiting for town council's feedback on the drafts, and then once we get it, I'll put make it. I'll put it in a warrant version, warrant format, and then um, I already started making presentations for town meeting. Did right. you get to give them? No, I think we discussed back in March too who was going to do we which did. one. We, um, so I'll pull yeah. that back out. We may need to go there. revisit that. Town council's going to do the CBD marijuana members. one. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I think Tony was signed up for. Footnote one. Footnote My favorite one. footnote. <laughs> John, were you on mixed use? I kind of feel like you might have been. I maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, I'll be there to help. Yep. Yep. Um. So that's where we are with Tommy. Okay. I just wanted to confirm before we yeah. move on to another issue. Yeah. Um. All right. So, I don't want to do this. Has, have you guys looked at the design guidelines recently? No. Can we just do a remember, like, our goal is yeah. what again? Great. So we had some open questions last time when we talked about it in March. Um, and I pulled out my notes. Well, no, I think, right, the yeah. going, stepping <laughs> yeah, all yeah. the way back, oh, stepping all yeah. the way back. The reason why we're picking them up and looking at them again is because, um, or at least from my recollection, is because um, what what um, we want to to do as the as the zone um, was expanded, um, we wanted to look at how we address. Um, different development types within the overall downtown smoke, smart growth area. The original idea um, was to put in different zones and have different zones within the, within the overall district. Um, that creates some, some issues. Um, and so I think where we, where we headed was instead of creating different zones, looking at the um, the actual impacts um, that were a concern, right? We're we're talking about the uh, the biggest one being the um, you know the residential area um, uh, uses Green Street sort of area um, or, or others, and how those sort of co could coexist with um, with other types of development in the area, and trying to get those all in the um, the guidelines. Right. Yeah, so I think we want to right. talk about district edges, adjacencies, how do we define residential neighborhood, like is it one unit, two units, three units, any amount of residential abutters, do we talk about abutters, do we talk about adjacency? So there's some semantics and terminology questions that we had. Um, 
so just like the discussion we just had for however long that <laughs> is, right? <laughs> um, it's right. It's about. It's exactly. It's about those um, those edges and making sure the two types coexist. Not necessarily going back and looking at the the, the base design guidelines for what was being projected to be developed and what is being developed, in fact, um, okay. so through the So figuring out what our balance of encouraging development to protecting existing yeah. and understanding what, where's the encouragement and where's the protection and how to define them both. Right. To constantly be on the lookout for unintended consequences. Yeah, at the same time. <laughs> Back and forth. Um, so how do we want to do this? So you have this. Um, you have this page. Yeah. Of um, of comments. Uh, it's titled "Outstanding Discussion Points from um, a, a yeah. Year Ago." Yeah. Nine seventeen eighteen. <laughs> yep. Because I think we put it off for a few months because we got busy last fall, and then we picked it back up right before I left. So, um, I know we had discussed these in March. So on the 311 minutes is also a very long bullet point list of uh, another outstanding discussion points. That's true. So I tried to highlight some of those bigger ones being how to define a residential neighborhood, residential development adjacent to, or uh, residential development adjacent to a residential neighborhood versus non-residential development adjacent to a residential <laughs> neighborhood. Um, to figure out the term of an abutter and transitional areas are really about the direct or across the street abutters. And there's so. some others sprinkled in there. Right. And this also reminds me, I think John Barnes had some like um, comments about um, how we define like, residential abutters, like when it rises to the level of needing different protections. And then um, the thing that just made me think of John was, um, Oh yeah, he was talking about definitions mm -hmm. and wanting more teeth, wanting the design guidelines to have more teeth than they have, so they're not just guidelines. Um, and didn't you do some, like this is, when you left, mm -hmm. Andrew did some best practices review of other places, mm -hmm. right? Yes, we did pull so up did other towns. And I think that the teeth was the piece that, like there was a lot of, guidance and not so much restrictions if I recall but I could be wrong yeah I mean restrictions generally are in zoning no I haven't yeah. and design guidelines are design guidelines um, yeah. but these design guidelines inherently have more teeth than like general design guidelines mm -hmm. were because they're part of the 40R statutory mm -hmm. process that's my understanding mm -hmm. is that they're kind of stronger than than just regular local design guidelines um, generally are. Can we do well like so what what's our end goal? Is it just a revision to the design guidelines document? Is there something that's going towards a town meeting? No, it doesn't have to go to town meeting, um, the design guidelines. They just have to be approved by DHCD. State. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's helpful to everybody, also given that it's already 9 o'clock, um, I was thinking this discussion would be happening much earlier because I wasn't thinking that last <laughs> item would take so long. I can try to um, get back in that headspace from the March meeting and propose some more stuff. Yeah. And Andrew did some like some good, yeah. Yeah, I'll have good to investigation. Find they were really interesting. I don't know why it's not in this folder. I I'll think did I forward it? I also forwarded you something I found on 
I'll find it again. <laughs> you forwarded us a really interesting um, Urban but... Land Institute yeah. Yeah. document on healthy corridors. Healthy corridors. corridors. Healthy corridors. Right. Do I have this vision for a Yes, yes. I will build it with you. <laughs> um, lighting down Main Street. Yes. Mm. Trees, trees. Borders. This week. <laughs> Keep mowing trees down, and I don't see plans to put more up. Um, but so, if it, and since it looks like Sarah's not here, yeah. she's going to come at you. <laughs> what, what? Like the, I don't understand it. The trees in front of um, what used to be Busa Liquors, they're right in front of, um, mm -hmm. what's yes. that? Um, the linear properties. Yeah. And the new building? What? No, it's not new. Oh, oh the, what's it, Burger King? No, what's the... There's Burger King, Burger King. and then there's like the natural food store. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they say liquors, yeah. Where um, they just lopped the top off of all those trees oh, really? this spring. No, way. no one noticed that? <laughs> no. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, this spring, <laughs> right? They were a nice cone-shaped tree growing perfectly, and they came along and cut off the top... Oh, that's the great. cone like the, part. The shape <laughs> and so I was just noticing actually today as I was driving up, they're fine. They're fine. They're sort of round now. <laughs> and they, over the summer, they sort of filled out and yeah. it, they don't look awkward. But I, I it just, Usually I don't know. Usually you shape them. Yeah. Or just I would have grow thought, to get more leaves. Right, I would have thought that they would have trimmed right, like, the bottom <laughs> so that because I know one of the concerns they had was that you couldn't see the signage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And so I would have thought that they would they would go from the bottom so that as they grow up, they locked they, off the top. But that they doesn't come off the top. Like, did what they did no. help at all with no. the trees? No, no. Because so. I know like, we, they were hoping they could take them out and do different ones because of the signage issue. And we were like, no. And we searched, and there there was so much conversation about those trees. There was an enormous and, amount of conversation. Yes, and there is like a folder that has like a thousand <laughs> photos of street trees in it, like real, because of because like, of those trees. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so we were just like, absolutely, in no way are you changing these, like, are you removing these trees? So that's that's interesting. And that was probably we had this discussion. That, I don't know. My memory is all, yeah. <laughs> but like maybe that was in February we talked to them. Oh yeah, right there. Look, they're <laughs> locked off at the top. Oh, they're like these cute little lollipops. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at the road when I'm driving. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. But you should yeah. let us know next time you see these things. I, but I mean, it, nothing, uh, right, there's nothing, there's nothing you can do. Right. <laughs> Go to the clippings and just. Put yeah. it on. <laughs> <laughs> it, and I, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just odd. It could be my car. It's going to be the last thing. I'm trying to tell. Like it's highly. It, yeah, it could be me. <laughs> so I thought where we ended up with this, now that I, I look a little bit more, I was more focused on this, um, is that we really, right, it's this whole, it's this l section 10. Yeah. yeah. It's where you yeah. really just it ended up. And, um, and just focusing in on those transition yeah. and, and then only reaching that back into the rest of the mm -hmm. guidelines so where up. we have to deal with definitions or something yeah. like that. All right, so why don't I take a stab at it and we'll okay. put it on the October agenda, um, unless our October agenda. So we're, we have scheduled on the October agenda a discussion of potential zoning balance amendments for 2020. <laughs> Sorry, no. Um, so, regarding October seventh, we now have the um, the two items that you just continued, um, and a discussion at the beginning of the night with our new economic development director, Erin. Says I want you all to meet her, yeah. and um, she and I will be working on some um, suggestions for the table of uses, modernizing it, um, like that. kind of fixing it. I know we've kind of talked about it. Yeah. A few times, and then also potentially some surgical fixes to the sign bylaw. Um, just rather than trying to, t under I know you're going to I'm just bringing it up again because yep. it's something that we deal with every day I working know. here. So I, I know you guys don't ever have to deal with the repercussions of our very challenging sign bylaw, <laughs> we do. Um, so rather than 
undertaking like a, a complete overhaul, which might seem like daunting and very time consuming, I thought there are, we've identified a few key areas that we keep stumbling over and that we keep hearing are problematic that maybe we could do some surgical sure. fixes to. I like that. Um, and so we would propose those to you. We would do the legwork here in house. <laughs> um, and uh, then you guys can vet the ideas. So that's how we were thinking of starting off the next meeting. Um, and we'll, and I'll, I'll try to prepare something for the design guidelines as well. So should we do minutes from August 12th? Sure. What's the um, board reorg? Oh, so it was brought to my attention that you technically are supposed to be chair and vice chair, not chair and secretary, according to the general bylaw. So, we just need to, um, okay. it doesn't change your duties, <laughs> really, okay, in, in our eyes. <laughs> it just gives me all these, like, you have all this knowledge that you're supposed to have that I don't have. No, you're doing no. great. Totally. You're all doing great. <laughs> and you can always, obviously, you can always ask us if there's anything that we want, that you, you have questions about, and then we'll just defer to Tony. <laughs> um... Um, there was an issue that ZBA was going to kick over to us. Did you hear about that one? Is it the Main Street? The 268, two, yeah. 258, 261 two, Main Street? Right. 259 to 267. Because we deal with these addresses every day, all day long. <laughs> right. Um, I think they're, they continued it to October 2nd. Mm -hmm. and yes, they did. Yeah. Okay. And, and then the it, it will be Smith coming. Oil? They haven't applied. It's the former Smith Oil property, yes. Um, they will be coming in probably in the fall to you guys. I guess any of your coming attractions? Um, yeah, sure. So that is a housing project. Um, I forget how many units. 28? 28. Okay. So, um, and they're going to smush themselves in before we get to <coughs> No, it's actually in the A40 zoning district. So that's a, it's, it's a portion where the business A kind of breaks. And there's A40 in the front along Main Street and then S15 in the back. And so they're going to zoning board for... Um, <coughs> Excuse me. They applied for a variance and or a special permit for the parking that they want to put in the back on the S15 district. They'll probably get it as a special permit. They have a different situation there than the property we're looking at tonight. And they've got wetlands. Yeah, and so th this is another one that will be in three different boards. Um, and there, this is the one where I suggested they start with the zoning board um, because if they don't get the parking uh, approval, oh, it'll yeah. impact kind of the rest of their development right. scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 28, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that should be coming in in the fall. I'm trying to think of what else. And then this subdivision at some point will come back to you, the Howard Street subdivision, maybe right. with fewer lots than you initially saw it. Um, Main Street Project's waiting to see what happens with zoning. Um, there's nothing else. I can think of that's in the works right now. Um, so it gives us ample time to work on design guidelines and zoning. Um, okay. Tony, question for you. Sure. If I have a potential conflict of interest, I can get a waiver from the granting authority. Would that be the chairman of this board? Would it be somebody in the town? office so on a matter that would be before this board yes and you would want to recuse or to it's it's my wife was actually the boss of somebody who owns the 268 uh, 269 259 261 property she's no longer their boss former owner I think it's the current owner or the current owner's family at least I would just run it by the State Ethics Commission and okay. we'll see what they tell you. That was my question. Who yeah. do I contact? Um, it's like the, what do they call it? The something of the day. Attorney of the day or something. It's, there's okay. like a hotline you can call. I can get you the information. Hmm. Okay. Right. I'll make a note. Yeah. I'd like to make everything I know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, no, that's great. I, I that's think great. that there's a little bit of leeway. Like you ultimately can decide mm -hmm. as long as you disclose. But I would exactly. definitely yep. defer you yep. to that. Right. Um, I just need to know who I have needed to, to close to and everything else. 
And then I feel like I was in the process of answering another question before we started talking about the context coming down the pipeline. Oh, yes. So we need a vote no. just to like. Uh, I mean, John will still be chair, right? Yeah. We'll All in favor of changing the title of the current <laughs> secretary to vice chair. Second. Motion to change the title Most of the change. current okay. secretary to vice chair. Second. Second. All in favor? I don't get to vote, do I? Yes, you do. Yes. Yes. No. Sure, yes. What do we do about a quorum? Do we have a requirement to have five voting members? No, three no. is a quorum three. for everything except for special permits. Well, three is a quorum for your meeting. Okay. Yeah. Special permits, you need four people to vote yes. Right. Whether you have three people or five people, you need four people. Right. Okay. So we need to be more cognizant of that in coming weeks, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I mean, tonight worked out great. So. I mean, there's still five of you on the commission. And for most of the time I worked here, there were only five. And it worked out all right. So. Okay. Um, and I, I think that at some point soon, if it hasn't happened already, the open position will be advertised. I enjoy my associate status. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to help. I wasn't going to nudge. You've worked for, you, you mean most of your time there's been only four people on the board? Yeah, that's probably true, isn't it? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Although, four people plus either a someone in the peanut gallery to, or or um an associate that wasn't an associate or whatever yeah george was kind of an associate but not really an associate right. and he right. wasn't while i was here oh he wasn't no. No. george Katsu. oh no, uh, Katsufis. Katsufis. oh that's way bad but we did have uh karen gun george yeah you know. dolan for a while and jeff george, hansen yeah. you know this a lot with um george would be 40r with, um, Right? Yeah, forty R with a lot of like you know planning, master plan stuff. Do you think is he he's still around? around? He is. Yep. I I I work with him from time to time. Mm -hmm. hmm. He was very involved in the re recodification of the zoning bylaw. Yep. Wait, which George are you talking about? Katsufis. Right. I'm talking about George Katsum. Oh. He's around too. He got he some development. Things. Yeah. So, in state and regional economic development, so. Oh, good. Yeah, if you guys know mm -hmm. of anyone who might be interested. Um, so. so, since it's now 4.33, um, <laughs> <laughs> do we, I have no idea what time it is. Yeah. Um, do we want to just dive through the minutes? Yeah, All right. it's 9.25. Pretty good attendance at that meeting, yes? <laughs> or at least chatty people. Yeah, you know, resident. Oh. Not <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know how to respond to yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gave you notice. You did. Um, Uh, the um, the signs that went up on um, Lincoln Street. 
What what um the no the build, the main building there the um oh, the uh, yeah. yeah on the MF Charles on the side there mm -hmm. those three that mm -hmm. were on the same those look good yeah I think so too yeah. I have to like look when I see when you drive by <laughs> yeah they they the with the black background mm -hmm. they seem to um it, it, and they're not gold right yeah. they're they're colors they're bright enough colors that they seem to pop out and mm -hmm. um not look even though there's a lot there that didn't look, it didn't look too busy just because of that good contrast mm -hmm. so that's a really it, nice building on the inside i recently had the occasion to like go and meet some, oh, yeah. some of the business yeah, owners there. Mm -hmm. yeah i it's went to the nice. salon upstairs it's a really nice picture. salon yeah you did a good job in totally and then the other one that was up is the Remax. Is everything's up on Remax? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's at the fair yesterday. That was their plan was to have it up right before the fair. How was it? Kind of. Definitely, they've done a good job building it up. I mean, to the detriment of the June one, which I think has decreased in attendance over the past few years. So it's almost like it's. It's done this a little bit, so it's super busy. But it was great. I mean, super like busy with booths, busy with people. Mm -hmm. I learned later there was classic cars, which I would have loved to check out, but I didn't know that they were there. So. You had the CBS. Yeah, yeah. usually no idea. I saw pictures afterward, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> next year. Yeah. And there's an event coming up next Wednesday that we're running. That I don't know if you. Oh yeah, I put that on my calendar, but um, I think I can do it. The, the economic we're launching, development. Like, yeah, we, we have a grant and we're working with a consultant on a downtown district management organization to try to figure out like what might work for the town of Reading. And we, we have an event to kind of like kick off the launch of it at the senior center, 6 o'clock Wednesday night. Pizza and ice cream and fun games. And I did put on my calendar. Staff. School and uh, stuff. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it's hard, I know. Unfortunately, I will not be able to make it. I'll be out of town. Be there in spirit. If you like what you see, you can have more. That's the plan. More events, more buzz, more advocacy for the downtown. More coordination of the things that are already happening. More opportunities for feedback and input, which is what I think works the best for this town. Yes, more opportunities for more opportunities. But into that end, we have a really nice four-page survey mm -hmm. we'll be distributing information about. I'll fill out the survey if you can get it early. Oh, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. It'll be open until the middle of October as well. It's on the website now? Oh, it's on the website now. We can send more information. We, 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 we're going to do a blast. Mm -hmm. Get it out to everyone. I did not do a blast. It is planned. Yes. Julie, I've got a quick question. Sure. Um, I got a notice from the town saying, are you re-upping? By the way, you... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't bring it. Oh, it just it. dropped, you know, the 6, 630, 19. You're no longer a member, I don't think. But are you a member? So do I have to get sworn in again? Because I thought I was sworn in for a two... Yeah, right. Sworn in a year. Yeah. Your terms, isn't your term three? It's two. 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 So do I need to get sworn in? You to get, get interviewed by the select board again, that's what I have to do. You can just indicate that you want to re-up, and then the volunteer advisory subcommittee will reach out to you, I think. Okay. Yeah, but no, that's a different piece of paper, because I got two of them. Oh. And it was weird that it said, oh, you, your last swearing in was June, si June of 2019. You right. need to be re-sworn in again. It's like... No, I was just sworn in June. <laughs> 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 and so. that's coming from the that's town clerk. clerk's office. Okay. Right. They also have me on the uh, bylaw committee, I think. <laughs> and you said no. <laughs> and actually, they have me as historically be on the bylaw committee, so I think that's incorrect. <laughs> no, I am my precinct chair. Just another day. <laughs> but I think just bring the paperwork to uh, the town clerk. Let they can figure it out. Yeah. They can tell you. I was very yeah. fine for not registering my dog. <laughs> it just went in the wrong bucket for yeah. a long time. Yeah. I'm, 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 
I don't know how anyone has multiple children, animals, a job, you a just, volunteer commitment. So my old job, I would bring things and I had a stack of like personal items. And so once in a while I would like personal office eyes. And now because I'm traveling, like I bring it with me, um, yeah. which, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not fun entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> So That's then it's fair. just like this like mess of stuff. And so things are getting through the cracks. And then a spare moment for Rachel. Your term will expire next June next 2020. June. Right. So I didn't think I had to be sworn in. No. If I have a two-year term, right. I swear right. in for the two-year yeah. term. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. That's correct. But they still ask, are you still with us? But that's okay. That's, that's just signed off saying yes. They're cleaning up their data. Yeah. You might want to clarify with them, though, that they have your term correct. Yes, that was expressed. They're sending expressed. you that now, you know what I mean? They wanted me to check it off. I have no comments on the current meeting, meeting minutes. Andrew, you did an excellent job. <laughs> Thank you. It starts with Kim, who does a great job. <laughs> okay. And then Andrew. <laughs> well, mostly I don't have to do anything. <laughs> Should put some litigation. What? Should put some litigation. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know. I always I have another seven. question. Yeah, that's her too. Does she? Julie, I have another question. Sure. You know where the green tomato was? Is or did you say is or was? Well, is for now. There's yeah. talk that something's going on over there, like a sale. I have no idea. That's the only land in the laundromat, laundromat in town. Oh, oh, oh! The laundromat is selling. Is that what you're saying? It's a whole block. Oh, I don't, I don't know. There's just anything about it. Scuttlebutt. Yeah. Okay. I'm hearing it from you for the first time. Yes. Almost a year ago, we had a developer in talking about that property. Yes, was that? Was I around? I think so. Mm. Like I said, the memory is <laughs> reality. Um, should be one of the um, best properties in town. I was going to say one of the hottest yeah. potentials. Straight across from the uh, from the train station. I'm still convinced they no, should be building cutters, up right? over the train tracks. Yeah, yeah you got lots yeah. of weird stuff involved no, in that. Oh, I know. Yeah, but I mean, how do you make mm -hmm. something out of nothing? I mean. It, so one of my big projects when I was in New York was, was Hudson Yards. Oh, nice. Okay. Which was, and I was, you know, so when I started this job, I came in and we got out of uh, Port Authority or Penn Station and drove out there. And the, the engineering marvel that that is of just like putting a deck mm -hmm. over a bunch of trains is just, and then building immense developments over and it's amazing it's, yeah. it's amazing oh well, architecturally it's i mean all i did was run numbers and like do plans and stuff and it was all conceptual but and that's creating real estate that yeah that's exactly yeah. and that's how we yeah. sold it and that's how it made that's the only way it was you know, i looked at a lot of things that didn't make economic sense and that made all yeah. economic right. sense yeah. i mean straight up just you're making something out of nothing so yeah, yeah. it was amazing and so it's crazy and so just knowing that but it is possible. It is it possible. Goes. It's just well, super hard. You have to start at 23 feet <laughs> yeah. in clearance. So I, well, it's not something I think that would fit within the fabric. Um, of, not, of not, not down at that train station. No. Yeah. Not, yeah. But the spot over behind where uh, Reading Municipal is, it's a nice stretch of yeah. property. Up, down. If you're interested in potential redevelopment of that area, yep. come to the select board meeting on <laughs> September 24th. I'd like to see that There will happen. be a presentation That's... by another consultant for which we got a grant to help us with a uh, redevelopment concept for the what we're calling the Eastern Gateway, which is that Walker's Brook. Walker's you know, Brook. Kind of like well, behind by. that Walker's Brook. Walker's Brook and then, and then the southern part bounded by Ash Street. Right. The you know, railroad going right through it. Right. The other so side of the bow tie, like land. you know, downtown. Yeah. Working with two consultants. Actually, two consultants, area. that's <laughs> correct. Yeah, that's right. And there's a big corridor analysis that's being done with some funding from 
authorized the town meeting and then some funding from the developer of the 40B over there to study that whole area and traffic and light and future development um, ideas and uh, to look at some intersection redesign and comprehensive. Okay. Yep. So those are two things that are happening. Traffic light mm -hmm. synchronization. Really just anything that to handle what's there now but also what is anticipated. Yeah, build out conditions. So, we have a lot going on here in planning <laughs> and economic <laughs> development, I should say. Who's in the director? What's her name? Erin Chester. Mm -hmm. C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. Yep. -E mm -hmm. So, we have a motion to approve. Approve. Second. We have to. Can you make the motion? Sure. Or? Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Cool. We're done before 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I just found in my briefcase. All right. Wow. Anything else? I just gave it to me. No. But so September 18th, Ice Cream no, Social at Paulson Street Center. September 24th, there'll be a presentation uh, at the Select Board meeting about economic development. Um, and we're planning a, an, another economic development summit on October 23rd at the library where we talk about most likely the bigger picture Walkersbrook area um, initiatives that we have going on. What date? That would be October 23rd. Which is a Wednesday, I believe, right? Yeah. Great, thank you. All right. Is that all? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. 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 Second.